You are listening to Leading the Factory Forward with your host, Lynn Friest. We share interviews with manufacturing experts and strategies for embracing the digital future, recruiting a new workforce, finding new business. Lynn is an advanced manufacturing strategist and leadership consultant who is on a mission to show manufacturing leaders how to improve their current operations while preparing for a digital future. And here's your host, Lynn Friest. Hello and welcome. This is episode 41 of Leading the Factory Forward. And here we start a new series and we're talking about the 2020 manufacturing trends and also some things about what manufacturers of small and medium size are looking for and who can help you. So again, our overall purpose is to help you create a compelling future for yourself, your teams and your organization. So in this first episode, we're going to talk about what's coming in manufacturing and we'll cover at least four items that I think might be useful. Now, some of these things I've talked about in earlier podcasts, but again, I want to keep returning to them and it's now 2020. And so I want to revisit these ideas. We need to keep focused on, you know, why is adopting technology so important? Well, the first is it makes you more efficient and faster. And every small manufacturer I've talked to said being responsive is a key to their success and survival. Second, you can grow while adding fewer people into your workforce. And we all know it's been difficult to acquire and hire new people. So if you can build your capacity without adding too many more people, that's a plus. And finally, if you're not on the digital manufacturing networks, you're basically invisible to both customers and partners. They won't even know you're there, much less what you can do. So you really have to be out there and be participating. And if you're not on these networks, They won't work with you either because they're not about to jump back into old paper processing or other old ways of handling information and clients. So, again, this is going to be about some of the manufacturing trends for 2020 and things at least I think might be very useful to pay attention to. And the four topics I picked out are ERP systems, enterprise resource planning systems, real-time monitoring, in other words, the Internet of Things. Automation, which also extends into robots and now cobots. And then finally, thinking about your supply chain connections and the whole distributed manufacturing possibilities that are out there. So getting off to the first start here with enterprise resource planning systems. Why would we pay attention to those? They can be, in the past, very painful to implement. They're often, in the past, not user-friendly. But some of those things are changing, and it's worth another look at it. And the most important thing is it really streamlines overhead tasks. So this is not so much about necessarily making your teams more efficient and productive, although they will. But this is also about making you more efficient and productive. It's streamlining the work that you have to do each and every day. The other thing is it helps now with these new systems. They can encompass a wide range of actions. So you can have an end-to-end system within your factory. You won't have these islands of information. The whole idea here is how many times have I talked to people where, oh, I get the data out of this piece of my system and then I type it into the next system because they don't talk to each other. So this idea of having end-to-end system in your factory is one more possible than ever before and more critical. Another piece of these ERP systems is connecting to both suppliers and to customers. Again, the people who are using these systems, that's how they want to communicate with you. They don't want to be sending invoices. They don't want to be receiving invoices. They want to connect through systems. And then again, I mentioned earlier, striving to find those seamless systems, get them integrated. In today's world, the other thing is you can now do this in a cloud-based manner. In the past, you had to possibly buy more system than you ever wanted. Now, it's more and more possible that you can buy just the amount of systems that you need to run your operation without having to have either a huge investment or a huge learning curve for things that really aren't useful to you. And the other reason for these ERP systems is, while it may seem counterintuitive because of the difficulty you've probably had implementing old systems, it provides for future ease of use. Again, it's a difficult transition if we're used to one system and moving to another one, but it does, in the long run, provide ease of use. And as a practical matter, if you bring in new people, they'll just learn the new system and won't even know about the things that happen in the old system. So they may adopt a new system more easily than you can because your habits are such that they're used to using the old system. The next item I wanted to talk about and that you could pay attention to is the real-time monitoring of information. It's more generically called the Internet of Things. With this real-time monitoring, now we can get more useful information right as it happens. We're not waiting for a terrible noise to happen in the factory. We're not waiting for 
you know, any number of things to somebody come running up and say there's emergency, we're getting more real-time information. And again, some of this is a lot more possible than it used to be because there are now people that are supplying things where you can provide some monitoring to existing pieces of equipment. And again, this gets into the whole idea of maintenance and analytics. What do we know in real time that can really benefit us? Because again, the old wait to fail type thing for our equipment is one, is not useful, but especially when we're in a fast pace and you want to be a responsive company, that's not the world you want to be in. And again, often some of these pieces of equipment are just critical. You're completely out of business unless you get it fixed. So to prevent failures, to monitor the equipment, to even learn about how efficient it is. And you could be finding out that, hey, you know what? We got this million dollar piece of equipment and it's only running five hours a day. What's the deal here? You might not have literally noticed that because of the other activities that had your focus. So this whole idea of just being aware of what's going on, it can be both for the maintenance viewpoint, but it's also critical for efficiencies. Now, the third item that I think is useful for you to be thinking about is, well, I call it automation, robots, and cobots. Now, you may not be ready for robots or cobots, but those are concepts that you should at least be considering. But automation is certainly there, and many of you have used it already, but it's, it's something you need to keep coming back to. Again, automation is very useful whenever there is repetitive work. It's also very useful when the work is heavy or a safety concern or in some fashion hazardous. And that's the kind of place where you can really gain efficiencies. If it's repetitive work, the machine will just keep doing it time after time, the piece of automation, whereas, you know, one, it may be hard to train an employee to do it. And two, you may have to keep training, you know, as you add employees, you have to keep training people to do this. So automation is something you need to look at, I'll say, the small pieces of automation. Often, some of these things come about in material handling arenas. If you're just moving stuff around or if there's something that you literally find a person just picking up something from one machine and taking it to the next machine, there's some possibilities there. And then robots are becoming easier to use and also less expensive and easier to either program or train in today's world that you train them as much as you program them. But those things are now becoming much easier. And then the final step is the cobot where, you know, literally you will have a person and a robot working together on something where the person will handle the exceptions, the cobot will handle, will say, the heavy work or the work that's dangerous. Then the final piece I want to talk about is supply chain connections. Again, as part of the technology arena, it goes a little bit back to the ERP, but it's also a mindset. You want to be thinking about how can I have seamless communications with the people that supply me with things and how can I have seamless connections with my customers? Our goal is to have rapid response times. Again, that's often what I've heard the small companies say is what makes them money and get some repeat business is their responsiveness. So having electronic connections between up and down your supply chain can be very critical. Now, another piece of this that can help is this whole idea of distributed manufacturing. You know, the idea that you may not have to have every process that's required for a product. You may be having someone else do a portion of the product for you. And again, to make that efficient and effective and responsive, you need to have seamless communications. If someone else is going to do some plating for you, if someone else is going to do some hardening or grinding, or maybe someone else provides you with a weldman that you can then use in a major assembly. And the final piece builds on that, and it's the opportunity to partner. Again, as a small, medium-sized manufacturing, you can only take on a certain size of contract. But if you have the opportunity through these online systems to partner with other people, it could be that each of you do half of a contract or you do 60% and they do 40%. But again, you have that opportunity to scale yourself up without literally adding to your facility. For a particular contract, you can partner with others. And that is really facilitated if you have thought through how do you connect with people digitally. So in the, in the end here, what I always try to provide with, is what are some of the first steps you can take? It won't be the final answer for these activities, but in terms of ERP systems, well, look at your current manufacturing processes and data. What are the things that really suck up your time as an owner and leader? Or what causes delays or even rework in your processes? Where do you have islands of information? Just even sketching out a simple mind map of what things look like in our current systems may lead you to, hey, you know what, the first step I need to take is over here in handling orders. 
or the first step I need to take is how I process returns, whatever it may be. Just look at how the systems you have today work. Because when I've talked to people who install ERP systems, that's where they always start. First, they find out what your current processes are and try to fix those if they're not working right before they attempt to do any automation. In terms of real-time monitoring or the Internet of Things concept, consider which machine or process is vital to you. What really shuts you down if it's not running? And is there anything that could help you make that different? So if in the last month you've had this machine shut down three times in the last two months for eight hours each time, they may be all different problems, but keep thinking about it, digging a little deeper. Is there some place where you could have got some indication that, hey, here's something that could have told us a little sooner, we could have prevented that downtime or at least scheduled the downtime. And maybe that's all you can do is if you at least know when your downtime might occur, then you can try to work around it. Then in terms of automation, robots, cobots, again, as I mentioned earlier in this section, what's a task or activity that could be automated fairly simply? And you know, this could be either a production task or even an administrative task, but it's the idea, just look at what are the things that are really routine that happen that could be done by either a systems or a process or some other type of electronic or piece of automation. And then think about what are the areas in your factory that are hazardous. They could be heavy. They could be the source of people getting injured. But think of where those things are occurred. And then it just gives you a spark of an idea of where you might go looking to or who you might talk to. And then finally, jumping back to this idea of supply chain connections. Simply draw a simple mind map. And I mentioned this earlier for your ERP system. But again, draw a simple mind map of your supply chain, your partners, your customers, and think about I lose time when these things come up. You know, what could I do differently? Where's the spot where I could have seamless communications and what might that provide for me? So those are, again, just some first steps that you might consider taking. And with that, I'll say that wraps up this episode. And I highly recommend the resources. I, I've included some links to some studies. They have a, a wide variety of trends for 2020. But again, just different sets of ideas. I chose only four of these ideas to uh, talk about today. But the resources have a multitude of different trends. And one or more of those might spark more interest for you. So I encourage you to look at those. Again, the four ideas we covered today was ERP systems, real-time monitoring or the Internet of Things, automation robots and cobots, and finally, supply chain connections. I'd also encourage you, in terms of having digital leadership, to look back at some earlier episodes I did. Episode 16, I generally talked about the themes around Industry 4.0. And then in episodes 17 and 18, I talked about some digital leadership skills. So again, these are things that might, might be useful for you to just uh, look back on some of those old episodes which are more with leadership than with technology, but in the end, it takes leadership to implement technology. So what's coming up in our next episode is we're going to actually look at what manufacturers have said that they need. Now, they don't always say the first thing that comes to mind is, hey, hey I need new technology. There are other things that they are doing, but I've gotten some results from the Manufacturing Extension Partnerships. These are statewide organizations sponsored by the Department of Commerce to help small and mid-sized manufacturers. So from 2019 and earlier, we get some common themes of what small, medium-sized manufacturers really are looking for in terms of help. So again, just want to review some of those things with you in our next episode. And finally, I want to encourage you to visit my website and to download the PDF that is at the bottom of the podcast episode. And you can use that as a tool to capture notes as you start your exploration of this episode and the concepts we've shared in here. So again, thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.